Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Lydia Neely, your Northern California Bible College librarian, and um, I have another tutorial for you, and I'm really excited about this one because I think this is something that is going to be very practical for you and just super helpful, which, you know, to be honest, that's kind of what we're all looking for is you know, show me how to do something, be practical, be, be helpful. Um, <clears throat> I will say you do need to watch the uh, orientation video before you watch this one. So here we are on the homepage of Northern California Bible College. And if you go all the way over here to the Virtual Resource Center, I'm going to click there, scroll down. Here's this 15-minute orientation video. And basically I tell you, okay, this is your virtual resource center and right here is the blog that has everything you need and here's an overview of this blog so you know where to get around. So definitely watch that. You do need to watch that one first. Um, and then there's going to be another video on here soon that is going to talk about the free resources page which I will be referring to a lot in this tutorial. It's it's longer and I, I can't cover all of that here and so you would you would really help yourself out if you watched that tutorial because it's going to give you a ton of information um, that's going to be super helpful for you when you're doing research, study, paper writing, lesson planning, what have you. And then the other thing I need to say real quick, if you have Accordance Bible study software or if you have a Logos, either one, uh, you may still want to watch this because I am going to show some... Um, some sources, some resources, some things that maybe you won't have. But honestly, everything I'm going to show you on this tutorial, you could do on that Bible study software in half the time, and everything would be saved, easily reproduced, easily organized. And yeah, so if you have accordance, yay for you. Uh, if you don't have it, then <laughs> this is going to be... Um, very helpful for you. So what I did was I wanted to put myself in your shoes and think, okay, I'm a student. I've watched the orientation video and, you know, maybe I've watched the tutorial video or I've watched the video about all the free resources. I, I get it, Lydia. There's a lot of information out there that I can use. But now I have this assignment and I don't even know where to start. So that's what I'm going to do. I am going to create a fictional assignment and I'm going to walk you through the process. So let's say I am a student and um, my, pr my professor says, okay, I want you to do an overview study of the life of Ruth. Now that is very broad. It's very basic. Um, there's no specific thesis or topic or idea or theme. Um, it's just a go out there, get information, write something. So the first thing I need to do is I need to do a little brainstorming. So let me think about this. An overview timeline, okay, or an overview study of the life of Ruth. So let's see, probably the first thing I need is some kind of a timeline. Uh, when when was Ruth? When was the book written? Um, you know, was it New Testament, Old Testament? I might need to pull out my Bible and do a little search and realize, oh, okay, Ruth was in the Old Testament. I see it right there, Book of Ruth. Um, but, you know, Old Testament spans a lot of years. So, you know, was it during the life of Abraham? Was it during the life of, you know, Isaiah? I mean, wh when was this? When did this happen? Um, the other thing is maybe just geography, you know, an atlas, maybe like, where did she live? Was she in mountainous regions? Was she at a port city in the desert? I mean, all of these things could have an influence on her life. And um, furthermore, historical resources. I'm going to need to know what were the events happening during her life that drove her to do certain things or um, culturally what was happening with the, the specific people group that she was a part of that would maybe um, influence her behaviors, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then finally, we need to find some scripture. Um, obviously, it's Ruth is a character in the Bible, so we need to know where in the Bible she's found, maybe find some specific scripture, scriptures that we can quote or that we can reference. If we could cover all of those bases, I think we would have a pretty good um, overview of the life of Ruth. So 
I've done my brainstorming and if you were if you're me um, you would write all these ideas down um, and then we got to get started so here we are virtual resource center right here in CBC student resources blog now uh, we're gonna spend a lot of time over here on this free resources page but before we do that I want to show you a couple things uh, research and writing help page if you have not read this please do even if you've written quite a few papers already at a college level uh, there's going to be stuff on here maybe that you didn't realize that's super helpful um, in the orientation video I do an overview of this page so I'm not going to talk too much about it here uh, the one thing I do want to highlight is down here I talk about a citation manager and I give a free option and I give an option you pay for but basically a citation manager is a place for you to gather and save and organize all of the citations and information that you get while you are doing your 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 research and your study and just to you know give you an example from my personal life when I was a college student you know, I was not a procrastinator, so I would, you know, about a week or two before an assignment assignment was due, I would sit and I would go through and I'd find, you know, I'd go into the library, I'd sit down, I'd pull up a bunch of different databases, find a bunch of articles, I'd email them to myself, maybe I'd print some out, you know, stowed away, a week would go by, now it was time to write the paper, I'd pull out all that stuff and, you know, articles would be missing or they wouldn't be organized or I did or maybe I wouldn't have a citation for one of them or what have you. And I'd spend half of the time I was supposed to do writing a paper. I would spend, you know, just reorganizing everything. So don't be like me. Think ahead. Use a citation manager. Find a place where you can save everything while you go so that it makes the paper writing process a cinch. So that's just a little tidbit from me. And if you need help with style or format or any of that, read this page. It's going to tell you all of that. And then one more thing. Um, Galaxy Theological Journal Library. Normally, I would tell you, go here for first because this is a subscription. Um, it's something we pay for, so it's going to be scholarly. It's going to be peer-reviewed. It's going to have some kind of quality control. You know, there's not going to be you know, super outdated information or broken links or anything like that necessarily. Um, but this is a journal database, meaning it's going to be a bunch of articles written by people about specific topics with very narrow um, themes, theses, or viewpoints. So if you're just doing something really broad, like an overview of Ruth, what you're really going to need is references uh, or reference materials. So things like encyclopedias, dictionaries, commentaries, um, things that are very broad in nature. Um, articles aren't necessarily going to help you because those are going to be very specific. Um, you're going to look for articles in databases when you're doing something like um, you know, define marriage or, uh, you know, women's, you know, women in the Old Testament and their use of, you know, dress. I mean, who knows? It, it's going to be something very, very specific. Um, but, but for our purposes, we're going to start with this free resources. And I will go back and show you a search in Galaxy at the end um, because I do want you to use that. Let's start here now. One last, one last little thing before we get going. Um, all of these resources, once again, let me show you how long this is. So many links. It's super awesome. There's just so much on here. And like I said, I'm watch the tutorial about the free resources page to know everything that's on here. But these are all free. Okay, <laughs> so... Yes, there, you know, um, there's a little bit of quality, quality control on this page because all of these resources, they've either, either come from, you know, other librarians I've known, it's, it's things that I know myself, or it's um, organizations or, um, you know, networks or associations that I trust. So yes, this is a good, odds are the stuff you find here is going to be good. It's going to be quality, you're going to be able to use it, but it is free. So that means two things. The first is that, you know, there might be broken links, there might be outdated stuff. Um, you know, 
there's not going to be somebody that's paid to keep up with all of this necessarily in the same way as, as you would over here in Galaxy or Accordance or Logos. The other thing about it being free is if you're getting something for free, basically you are consuming something and you are a consumer. And so the way you're paying for it is by watching ads. It's just like TV. It's just like YouTube, all of those things. So the first time I'm actually having to re shoot this video because the first time that I did it, I was on a, a Christian Bible, uh, you know, Bible study website. And there was this ad that popped up that was, um, you know, not very appropriate and was extremely distracting. And, um, the reason I chose not to use it in this tutorial is I thought it was super distracting. I thought it would take away from what I was trying to do, but I will warn you that you are going to get ads and that's where you basically have to be an adult and you have to say, okay, you know, just as if you were on YouTube or watching TV or whatever, you know, do I close this ad? Um, if I can't close the ad, do I just ignore it and keep reading or do I actually close this, you know, site altogether and go somewhere else? You make that judgment call as an adult. Um, and, but for the purposes of this video, I tried to make sure there wasn't anything too distracting on here, but it might happen. And, you know, we just, we got to be grown ups and just deal with it in the moment. Okay. So <laughs> all that, let's get started. We're going to do our overview of Ruth. Now, a good place to start with any you know, broad basic search. We need references, uh, reference materials. Let's go ahead and click on the Association of Christian Librarians Virtual Theological Library Project. Phew, that's a long name. Uh, librarians are not known for short names because we are very specific because we want you to know information. Um, so all this to say, I trust this portal a lot because I am personally a member of the Association of Christian Librarians. I know a lot of the members, and this is a project that we have all done to help assist small Bible colleges and large ones um, in finding quality theological information. Now, down here we have ebooks, Bible commentaries, open access journals. Now, if we are just getting started, Book of Ruth, The Person Ruth, we know nothing about Ruth. Um, a commentary is really a great place to start. So let's go ahead and open this up. Now we have a little, um, basically we have a way to filter this and kind of uh, some parameters that we can do. So first of all, coverage. Let's say we know that Ruth is in the Old Testament and there's two, two hits there. Um, we could do whole Bible commentaries and that would give us more. And um, let's go over here. We want something, we don't necessarily want unknown or popular. We're doing a paper, we want it to be scholarly. So let's select that. So now we have 17 different options, um, but let's, let's narrow it down a little more. Let's say we just want, we specifically want an Old Testament commentary. Um, now we have two and let's see, let's just, let's click on this first one. Uh, oh, I was going to go back and show you because this one, it says the theological perspective is evangelical. So we're okay with that. Um, it's exegetical. We definitely want that. And it's scholarly. So all of that sounds great. Okay. Now look over here. Oh, Book of Ruth. Let's click on that. Now this is, it's always good when we're just getting started. And once again, like I said, there's some ads over there. I apologize for that. Let me see if I can close this. Okay. So like I said, I, I have no control of the ads that are going to pop up. This is a Christian website, but you know, we got to make those calls. So um, this is the book of Ruth. And here is an overview. And uh, let's go ahead and look at this because that's that's a good place to start if we really know nothing. Um, so it says, this book together with the judges treats the life of Israel from the rule of death of Joshua to the rule of Eli. So hmm, that gives us kind of an idea of maybe when it was written. At least it tells us what part of the Bible it's in. Um, it gets its name from the principal character. So that's helpful. Um, let's see. 
It's a continuation of Judges showing the life of the times in its greatest simplicity. Um, oh, right here. Important because it shows the lineage of David through the whole history of Israel and thereby is a link in the genealogy of Christ. So there's something important about Ruth. Um, she has something to do with the genealogy of Christ. So that's interesting. And here we go. Typical, typical matters. Um, Ruth is a type of Christ's Gentile bride, and her experience is similar to that of any devout Christian. Uh, Boaz, the rich Bethlehemite, accepting the strange woman in an illustration of the redemptive work of Jesus. So now we have another name. We have Boaz, and he's rich, and he's a Bethlehemite, and he accepts Ruth. So that means something. We, we don't quite know what that means yet. Keywords are love and faith. So maybe that's if we're opening our paper or we're closing our paper, we might want to mention this, that here's some key words that we see over and over again in her life story in this book. And here's this analysis, the sojourn at Moab. So, okay, we know she lived in Moab. That's a place, um, the return to Jerusalem. So Jerusalem is a part of her life and Moab is part of her life. Uh, Ruth and Boaz, gleaning the fields of Boaz. Um, you may not know what gleaning means. You might need to open a dictionary, uh, read that. I happen to know that gleaning is something that um, it was people who owned fields, um, the leftovers that were kind of scattered on the sides. They would allow widows and orphans and poor people to come and glean to just basically get the leftovers for free. It was kind of a charity thing. Um Ruth married to Boaz. Okay, so now we've learned that Boaz, she does marry him, and, you know, he's a rich dude, and he's a Bethlehemite. So all of those things probably play key roles in the importance, meaning, the story, all of that. A redemption of Naomi's inheritance, we don't know what that means, so we're going to have to figure that out later. Uh, genealogy of David. Okay, so once again, we see something about David, genealogy of Christ. So these are just all clues, things that are going to help us. Now we could choose to go through and read, you know, the commentary on each chapter. That might take a while. And we also want to get more than just one source. So let's go back. Let's go back to our free resources page and let's find some other sources that we can look for. Okay. Close that. We don't need that. All right. So we found a commentary. Let's maybe do, let's do an encyclopedia because those, you know, a dictionary can give us words and themes and ideas. A commentary or a, an encyclopedia is going to be a little broader. Um, so here's this biblical text and study tools here. Let's scroll down. Okay. Here's a Jewish encyclopedia. That's interesting because we know from our first source that uh, Ruth was a part of the lineage of David and of Christ. So I'm sure she's going to be a part of Jewish history. So let's go ahead and click on that. And let's go ahead and type in Ruth, see what comes up. Okay, so we've got a couple of different, a few different articles here. The first one, Ruth Book of, that looks promising. Oh, here's something about Boaz. So if we wanted to learn more about him, Orpa, we haven't seen that name before. Uh, a Moabitess, daughter-in-law of Naomi and wife of Malon. After the death of the husband, Orpa and her sister-in-law Ruth wished sister-in-law Ruth wished to go to Judea with Naomi. So that's another. So it looks like Orpa and her sister-in-law Ruth. So maybe that was that was obviously a relative of Ruth's. But let's go back up here, Book of Ruth. And as you can see, there's a lot to read here. And if you were doing this on your own, you wouldn't be going this fast. You would take time. You'd read through all of this. I've saved you that time and done that ahead of time. And um, let's see, down here, date of composition. That's one of the questions we had was, when was Ruth Witt written? And what one of the things I read in here was um, there were a couple of words that stuck that stuck out, and one was um, some people think it's post-exilic, and then uh, somewhere else down in here, 
I don't remember where, but it said something about it being pre-exilic. So the fact that they didn't just give me a, a date, they didn't say, you know, 241 BC or whatever, um, and they, they throw around these words post-exilic and pre-exilic, it tells me, okay, maybe they don't exactly know when this book was written. Um, and they're saying exilic, which if I know, you know, once again, if I didn't know what that was, I'd be getting out a dictionary, I'd be looking it up. But I happen to know that that there's was something called the exile that was a part of Jewish history. And so this happened either before or after the exile. So we don't have a date exactly, but we have a clue as to where in the Old Testament timeline the book of Ruth took place. So once again, we're going to add this to our list of citations because we gained some information from it that we're going to use in our paper. I'm go, going to go back now to our free resources page. Uh, let's go down to uh, biblical texts and study tools again. Uh, the study light is helpful. We'll go there. And let's go ahead up here at the Bible study tools. We've got commentaries again, concordances, dictionaries, encyclopedias. Let's go to a concordance. Uh, we've used an encyclopedia. We've used a commentary. A concordance can be really helpful because it, it basically takes um, words or themes and tells you where in the Bible those are found. Uh, let's go to Nave's topical concordance. And just to make it easier over here, we'll type in a uh, Ruth. Okay, here's our match, Ruth. All right, so this is going to be very helpful. So it has the book of Ruth. It has some bullet points here. Ruth is the daughter-in-law of Naomi. All right, we've established that relationship to Naomi, and we've got a scripture reference that tells us that. Um, she goes to Bethlehem, and we remember that Boaz was a Bethlehemite, so Bethlehem must have been where she met Boaz. She gleaned in the field of Boaz. Um, under Naomi's instructions, she claims from Boaz the duty of a kinsman. So now we have another clue. Remember that thing we read about Naomi's inheritance? Um, and now it's saying kinsmen. So obviously Boaz and Ruth, or Boaz and Naomi, somehow they were there was a relationship there. Uh, they were relatives somehow. Uh, Ruth Mary was supposed Boaz, and Ruth becomes an ancestor of Jesus. Once again, all with scripture references so we can cite all of these in our paper and just have this good idea. And this has answered so many questions about places, people, and um, themes of, of the life of Ruth. So that was super helpful. We're going to save this citation because we're we used it um, to gain information. So now let's try another tool and let's go to the encyclopedias again they can be helpful here's this 1911 encyclopedia let's click that and let's type in Ruth again we don't want Ruth Stewart we just want Ruth go oh no hold on got to reload this page let's try again It's taking a little while to load. And once again, you know, these free resources, sometimes, you know, they have some glitches. But here we go. Book of Ruth. Once again, here's a whole long article. If you were doing this for real, you would be reading this. You wouldn't just be breezing through like I am. Um, but I have already looked through this for you. And I found a little, a little portion in here that I'm going to read and it basically says um, it has indeed been argued that as the author seems to take no offense at the marriage of Israelites with Moabite women so we know it's referring to Ruth he must have lived before the time of Ezra and Nehemiah but the same argument would prove that the book of Esther was written before Ezra the very designation of a period of Hebrew history as the days of the judges is based on the Deuteron Deuteronomistic additions to the book of Judges and does not occur till the period of the exile. All right, so all, once again, that word exile has come up again. And from that big, long paragraph that I just read, 
the idea is, yeah, we don't quite know when this book was written, but it was somewhere around the exile, either after or before. And what's what's good about that is this is a second source that we have found that agrees with this idea. So now we have two sources that both say, okay, we don't quite know when Ruth was written, but it was either pre or post exile. So that makes us feel good. It makes us feel like, all right, we're on the right track. We're finding more and more sources that agree with each other. Um, if if I had gone to this article and had said, no, the date was, you know, this exact number, then that would discredit the previous source that we just read. So that's why you always want to find lots and lots of sources to um, verify, you know, what you're putting in your paper. So we're going to save this citation. Once again, it was another one we're going to use. And let's go back once again to our resources, free resources page. So now we want to do a little bit about just geography, where she le lived, um, cultural and current events of her time, um, all that kind of stuff. So let's scroll down to biblical backgrounds and history right here. Okay, let's do background Bible study, ancient manners and customs, daily life cultures, Bible lands. Okay, so when you get to a website like this, uh, I, I'm i trusting this page somewhat because I got this from a colleague or I got it from a list that was on another university's website. But you always, once again, you want to find multiple, if it's free and it's just out there on the web, you want to find multiple ones that agree with each other. So we're going to read all the information on here and take it with a grain of salt and then find maybe another historical Bible background, pay, you know, site that says basically the same stuff. And once again, if you had Accordance or Logos, you'd be able to find all this stuff pretty easily. But let's go up here to the search. And, you know, we want to learn a little bit about culture. We want to learn about, um, you know, the people group that Ruth was. And we read in that one, in, in the, the last encyclopedia, we read about an Israelite marrying a Moabite woman. So we understand that Ruth is considered a Moabite. Um, so let's go ahead and look that up. Moab, Moab in the Bible, uh, Moab, Moabites. Let's just go ahead and click that. And we have a bunch of different, um, different Moabites, Old Testament map of ancient Israel. That would be helpful. Um, Moab, Moab, Bible cities, resources, uh, let's go up here to Ancient Moabites. So here we have who the Moabites were, where they lived, Moses and the Moabites, Judges and the Moabites, David and the Moabites, Israel and the Moabites. So this is all going to give us clues to who these people were and how they played roles in the Bible. And then we also have a map here, the territory of the Moabites. So this could be very helpful to us in... Um, describing Ruth, describing where she lived. Um, looks like it goes back to the time of Abraham, um, the Dead Sea. So this is all just super helpful information that we would not have known ahead of time. So there you go. Now let's go back. I'm going to look at this biblical backgrounds and history again. Here's another one, Bible History Daily. Let's try that one. Okay, and this is just another biblical archaeology society bringing the ancient world to life. So this, you know, it's a society that kind of lends some, you know, some clout to it, kind of tells us, okay, there's some, you know, learned people backing up this site. And this one, you know, aesthetically, it's a little more appealing, which means some people put some time into it. Um, but let's go ahead and go up to this custom search here. And we still don't we still don't know okay when Ruth lived. We know it was like around the exile time, but when was that? So let's um let's try to find a timeline. So let's do Bible timeline. Let's see what comes up. Okay, we'll scroll down here. Here's an overview timeline, eras and precipitating events. That sounds promising. And here we go. Now, obviously, you're going to want to find a couple different timelines that agree with this um, to make sure whoever created this one, you know, knew what he or she was talking about. But 
right here you see this red section and it says exile and it also says that it was from 586 to 538 BC so now we have a timeline now we have a much narrower window of history when we can say that Ruth lived and if you know that timeline you can even go to just general ancient history and find out okay who who were the the major players during that time who were the you know who were the rulers what wars were being fought you know if you do, you can kind of create a bigger picture of Ruth's life now that we know when she existed so there we go all right let's go back to our page and so we really have covered pretty much everything that we we need in our brainstorming session about Ruth you know we've we've talked about her timeline the geography of where she lived um, we've got some some sources that will tell us about the culture and the people uh, we have some scripture um, references and quotations we know who the major players were um, the places all that kind of stuff so we're pretty we're doing pretty good and I think we've done a good job of learning about the life of Ruth. Um, that being said, I do want to show you Galaxy Theological Journal Library real quickly. Um, it's right here. Now, I, I have a confession. Um, I did have a, a, a subscription to this, like you, uh, and I forgot to renew it. And so <laughs> I can't show you the full text, but I can show you just basically how to do a search. Um, but... You know, the best, the easiest way, honestly, is to search by verse. And I'm just going to put in, you know, Ruth 2, 3. I already did that one. So I'll enter that in. And here's a bunch of articles. And they're going to cover, they're going to cover Ruth. They're going to cover Ruth 2. They're going to cover um, more than that because maybe it's just Ruth. So we'll find some that are about like Ruth three or, you know, Ruth chapter three instead of verse three or whatever, but it's going to pull all of those keywords we put in and bring up some articles. And if you look at the titles of these, um, theological reflections on Naomi's shrewdness. Okay. So that's not going to necessarily be helpful in our broad overview of the life of Ruth. But if you were doing maybe a paper on you know, shrewdness or cunning or conniving characters of the Bible or what, you know, this, this would be helpful for you. You would be citing this, um, beautiful scandalous night, how God brings redemption through a foolish plan, a faithful woman and a righteous man. So you might read this and then just use it as a, an opening or closing theme. You know, you might say, here's the overview of the life of Ruth, but let me tell you, here's really why she was significant and here's how she fits into the overarching, um, you know, narrative of the Bible. Uh, let's see, um, re a rhetorical use of point of view in Old Testament narrative. Once again, that's not going to be helpful to our paper, but if you were doing a study on Old Testament narrative, then yes, it would be helpful. So, you know, this is, this is a great resource. It's, um, you know, it's going to be scholarly, it's going to be trustworthy, but it's not going to be good for a broad study. It's going to be good for a more narrow study. And that being said, let me uh, go back to the free resources. We do have other journals on here as well. A biblical, Biblica is a research journal. Acta Theological is another one. Um, electronic Theological Electronic Journals Library Theology and Religious Studies. Um, let's go ahead and open just one of these. And this is going to be the same type of thing. So here's our search box. Let's do uh, uh, let's do title. Maybe we want it to come up in the title and we want to search the whole collection. Um, we'll just you would never do something this broad if you were searching um, journal articles. It would be much more specific than this, but just for, you know, just to show you, I'm just going to put this in here. Okay, so now we have a whole bunch of articles about Ruth that have Ruth in the title. Um, Taking risks and overstepping boundaries in the book of Ruth. Uh, the book of Ruth in the time of Judges and Ruth, the Moabitess. So, yeah, you might, some of these might actually end up 
being helpful to you in your overview study of Ruth, um, or they might be too narrow. Uh, you would just want to open up a few of these. Uh, so you can, let's see, click that. You can email this article to yourself. You can, or email it. You can print out the PDF. Here's the abstract. This article addresses two issues in the book of Ruth that have not yet received much scholarly attention. Um, and then it kind of goes through and talks about it. There's the article. Uh, so this is another, another source for you, just another place to find more narrow, you know, like I said, your professor gives you a very specific idea or theme and you got to run with that. Um, but if you're doing an overview, then you're, you're going to want to use reference materials like dictionaries, encyclopedias, concordances, uh, you know, atlases, those types of things. And if you don't have accordance, which has all of those, um, then you're going to come here and that's where you're going to find it all. So I hope that this was super helpful to you. I hope that you feel confident now that when you get those assignments, you know at least where to start and how to kind of go through that process of finding sources, saving the citations, and then be, being able to refer back to them and create your paper out of that. Um, so God bless and have a wonderful day or night, whichever, um, whatever time you are viewing this. And uh, thank you so much.